Hi, Floss Tube. Hello, Floss Tube. I'm Pam. And I'm Stephanie. And this is Just, Just Keep Stitching, episode 336. 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 50 plus 100 plus 100. Yeah, is 336. I you left off 50. No, I did. 50 plus 100, 150. Just plus 50 is 336 because math. I caught a math mistake. You did. That's job amazing him. in and of itself. Yeah. Red letter day. Hello, people. How's everybody doing? We hope you're doing well. Um, in the Christian world, it is Palm Sunday. So. Such a funny statement to start out with. I know. I didn't know how to word it. But yeah. It's, for some, it's Palm for Sunday. For some, it's Palm Sunday, and we hope you have. A nice one. Yeah. Had a nice one. Will have a nice one. I don't you know. know. Whatever. Got, it's a beautiful all your palms. sunny day. <laughs> it's a beautiful sunny day here in Southwest Ohio. It is. And um, perfect day to me. We're if you here ask to. Me. We're here to give you a little bit of an update on what's been going on with us. Yes. Regarding cross stitch. Yes. So. so. <laughs> um. I've been starting out these videos the last few weeks with a little bit of a business update from Keepsakes. If anyone is new here, Keepsakes is the uh, local needlework shop in Cincinnati, Ohio. We live in Cincinnati, Ohio. I also work for Keepsakes. So, um, uh, a little bit of an update. So, the last, in regards to market orders, the last big thing that we're waiting on still are our friggin' Prairie Schooler Santas. I am hoping, I've talked to Hoffman 47 times this week, so I am hopeful that they will be in our mailbox either Monday or Tuesday, and that should complete just about everyone that's waiting on stuff. Um, so, I think there's maybe one or two Cardinals in market orders that are left in the shop. They're waiting on Santa's, and... Um, Cardinals orders have begun shipping. So I sent a ton of sh shipping notifications last night, the day before, day before, all that. So um, I think we're down to less, I don't want to say a number, but because um, I don't box myself in. Um, so, but they have started going out. So um, I did make a little bit of an Instagram story this week on the Keepsakes page. Um, in regards to the shipping date of Cardinals, when we posted, when Cardinals appear by JBW Designs, it was said in the post and in the listing on the website that they would not begin shipping until April 1st. So obviously we are ahead of the game, but just as a word to the wise, in general, when making purchases, let's read the words. That's helpful. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so. And you meant the Instagram account for Keepsakes. That's where you put the story. Correct. The post. Yeah. 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 On the Keepsakes Instagram page. Yeah. So, um, so we're ahead of the game on the Cardinals order. So I feel great about that. Um, and another batch of tracking numbers will go out this evening after we're done doing all the floss tube stuff. And um, I'm in the shop working Monday, Tuesday, and then I'm not in the shop Wednesday, Thursday. So, I mean, ideally, I can come back next Sunday and tell you guys that all the Cardinals orders have shipped. So, if you place an order, like, after the 1st of March on the website, those are going out after the pre-order for Cardinals. So, just know that. So, um, I will keep everyone apprised on to where we're at. On this channel so I know that a lot of people that watch our channel purchase from keepsakes so I yeah. feel like it's a good use of our time to share that information with everyone mm -hmm. sorry if you don't shop at keepsakes and don't care but um so that is uh the keepsakes market cardinals situation update um and in regards to StitchCon, just another reminder, like I said last week, that the date to get a full refund guaranteed is March 31st for StitchCon. So, just keep that in mind as well. Um, and ideally, so obviously, like, getting out these Cardinals orders is my number one priority. Um, and then, hello, sir. 
So once, um, once all of this is behind me, the focus is stitch con. So after all of this, then the, um, list of all the attending floss tubers will go up on the website. Um, and you know, we'll start the itinerary doesn't come out till typically around the last week of May, first week of June. So, um, like the exact, like hour by hour situation. Um, all of the information about like what happens at StitchCon, what a day looks like at StitchCon, all that information is on the StitchCon website. I will say that the best place to view the StitchCon website is on your, like a laptop or PC. Um, on the phone, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so that's my recommendation there. So, but invoices are still going out. We still have people that are on the wait list. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, sent up, I'm working on it every day. So, yeah. <clears throat> and then just keep stitching business. We've heard from all our giveaway winners, except Eileen Robinson, 1724, the winner of the Annie B's signs of christmas from last week so um i will again tag you eileen in the description box um and then if we do not if we don't hear from you by recording time next week then we'll pull a new winner yeah okay yeah all right perfect Absolutely. so um yeah we were talking this morning about how we have these various ways of communicating information we have our Facebook pages, our individual Facebook pages. Uh, if you happen to be a Facebook friend of either one of us, you might see information about what's going on. We have our individual Instagram accounts, mm -hmm. and they are individual. There is not a just, just keep, keep stitching, stitching Instagram page, and right. I don't anticipate there ever will be. Nope. Uh, and we have uh, this YouTube channel. And we never should assume that someone who might hear something on this channel would necessarily follow us, either one of us, mm -hmm. on Instagram yeah. or be Facebook friends with us. Right. Um, and so it's hard to keep all the balls in the air mm -hmm. sometimes yep. in regards to information what's going on, whether it's um, a personal situation or a um, just an interaction that we have on social media. Uh, and so it does take a little bit of finessing to make sure that uh, I know that I think oftentimes what is the best way to share something. Right. Uh, there are folks on Instagram, for instance, who don't know anything about Instagram stories, mm. for instance, uh, and that kind of thing, that there are different levels of familiarity and we try to be, be, accommodating. Aware, be accommodating and be aware of that. Yeah. So you might hear a tidbit of information from either one of us or together as we are sitting here mm. that you also might see in other places and um, that's just the state of social media right now. Yeah. Anyway, but we don't make any assumptions that if you've heard it here or you haven't heard it here that you've heard it somewhere else. Sure. So anyway. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, right. hashtag is, uh, our, so our attempt to match up, uh, stitchers with other stitchers. And we've been doing it now. What's for, it called, Pam? It's called Stitch Harmony. Kind of like that eHarmony e dating site. That's what but we no romantic, in. but no are romantic required. connections. Uh, and you you're connected because of your right. love of cross stitch. But the reason I'm bringing it up, first of all, we did not have a Stitch Harmony um, commenter this past week. There have been weeks in the past when we have had as many as four or five. Um, and someone though during the past week wanted was interested in knowing if there were any Stitch Harmony success stories. Oh, yeah. And there have been many. Many. Uh, and 
how many years did I say we've been doing it? Three or four? Oh, it's just Harmony? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I was, I was uh, made aware by that question that it's kind of difficult to know how successful Stitch Harmony has been mm -hmm. over the years. Yeah, for sure. Um, the, uh, I responded to this commenter saying there have been many success stories mm -hmm. and, sh and this viewer said, I will go back and, and watch for them. That's mm -hmm. kind of hard to do. Yeah. So um, I guess maybe I'm throwing it out that um, if you have a success story, if you have a success story um, and uh, there isn't anything else to comment about. Maybe just talk about your hashtag Stitch Harmony yeah, sure. uh, matchup, whether you found a group, whether yeah. you do a Zoom with folks, whether mm -hmm. you have met up with um, someone. Uh, I was over at the shop briefly yesterday, and there was a woman there who was one of our Stitch Harmony um, commenters mm -hmm. and thought she had something going, and then didn't hear anything. Then every communication stopped for an unexplained reason. Bummer. So um, I was intrigued by that, but we kind of chalked it up to uh, the other Life. person must have had a lot of things going on sure. and just couldn't take the time to follow up. Yeah. So there are um, there are a lot of things that can be accomplished only to a certain extent, um, and. That's why we do it the way we do it. Yeah. It's more or less, we, you know, throw the ball out on the field and everybody play. Yeah, yeah. And that's the extent we want to get involved in yeah. it. Um, we're both too busy to get involved in keeping a registry or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That's not our bailiwick. Correct. So uh, I means. say that with the encouragement that you post your Stitch Harmony success stories or with the hashtag at the front post if you would like to participate in that yes because, all we need is your name and where you live yeah name and where you live um we love doing it and we love hearing about um success stories for an example last week we had a woman who was in southern california in the orange county area mm -hmm. And we talked about a guild that has now disbanded. Mm -hmm. And she got two very good responses. And I hope that woman saw those. Yes. Uh, about different groups getting together in Southern California. Um, and that's the kind of networking we're trying to provide a vehicle for. So um, just, a, just a word about hashtags to Harmony. We'll always have it available for to use, whether we get four or five people that would like to try it, or uh, we only get a random one here or there. Okay. That's just the state of the world. Yep. I do know that since we started, I think we can safely say there are more retreats around the country in different areas of the country mm -hmm. than there were when we started. Yeah. And so that might be a reason why there are less requests for um, matchups. Yeah. It's a, mm -hmm. Because people are finding places to yeah, go sure. that are close to them, yeah. don't cost a lot of money to attend, yep. that kind of thing. Yep. However, so that's what I wanted to throw out there in okay. terms of hashtags to Charmony. Cool. Share your success stories if you would like to. Awesome. All okay. Right. Ready? Come on. That means it's time for Pam's pin comment. Pam's pin comment is the one comment after last week's video that I particularly liked. It made me laugh. Mm -hmm. It was poignant. It was funny. Like that word. All those things. Poignant. Poignant. And if you were with us last week or saw our last video, um, Stephanie showed a Mill Hill kit mm -hmm. of a fire station. Yes. And it it uh, made her think of a car accident she was in. Yeah. Um, and we had two people who could relate to such an accident. And I picked one of them, not to say the other one wasn't just as good. Sure. But this comes to us from Angie Fitro. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Angie. 
and this is directed towards Stephanie, but um, one of the things that uh, she related to in our video was Stephanie mentioning her car accident mm -hmm. and the fact that she um, unintentionally, of course, mm -hmm. accidents Obviously. are not intentional, uh, but by a fluke, it, it happened right in front of a fire station. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is what Angie said. Dear Steph, the more I watch your show, the more I think we are so much alike. Years ago, I was traveling to my father's house in my tracker when an 18-wheeler mm. flew past me on the Cumberland Pass and blew me off the highway up the hardened snow cinder mound, sent me spinning, and started me rolling into the median. That's crazy. I landed upside down, which is exactly what happened to Stephanie. Yep. Hanging by my seatbelt, which is exactly what happened to Stephanie, mm -hmm. which is a real feat. The airbags did not go off, yet somehow both lenses popped out of my glasses. That's wild. The window did not even crack. I don't even know if my airbags went off. They must have. I don't remember either. But I do remember we never found your wallet. Nope. Nope. Anyway, <laughs> Angie goes on. Suddenly, six burly men were shouting, opening my doors. I was trying to release the seatbelt, and they did not want me to move. I released the seatbelt. Yeah. And I, because I didn't realize I was upside down. Yeah. But so, all, oops. Okay. And Angie says, but all I could do was be embarrassed at the, get this, Mountain Dew and pretzel sticks all over the roof of my Jeep. And Stephanie was in a Jeep. No, I wasn't. You weren't? No. Nope. That was not your Jeep? Okay. No. She had a I had a Jeep, but that wasn't the okay. Jeep. But there was probably nothing doing the car, though. Yeah. The firemen like had pencils. been standing outside of the firehouse when they witnessed my wreck. Exactly the same. Yep. And they found it unbelievable that I had survived. Mm. After getting me out of my vehicle, they took me to the firehouse and plied me with hot cocoa and let me use their phone. They rolled my car right side up, dug it out of the median, and got it back onto the highway. Two of them then followed me to a local tire shop, and I think they were responsible for getting a discount for me. The only that. damage was to my tires and my glasses. That's crazy. However, I did find Mountain Dew encrusted pretzel sticks in <laughs> weird nooks and crannies for a year. Yeah, I bet. Um, I do remember the night of that accident very well because she had she had been at a friend's house. Mm. And was on her way home when all of this happened. Yeah. And the phone rings late at night. And this is a parent's worst nightmare. And the <laughs> first thing out of her friend's mouth was, Stephanie is okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. And I mean, at least he lived with that. Good yeah. with good with him for knowing for the most that. important piece of information yeah. is your kid is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, that's not a... stitch, stitch, uh, cross-stitch related, but it was really kind of eerie to get yeah two folks right okay so i wanted to know where the cumberland pass was because mm. i didn't know right. do you know where it is i'm gonna say it's somewhere in kentucky and tennessee okay so i need to know which one it is because there's the cumberland pass which says it's a mountain range in the Sawatch so Range of the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. Oh. So there's that one. Yeah. But then, and I'd never heard of Cumberland Pass. I've heard of Cumberland Gap. Okay, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. And then, I, I, where is the Cumberland Pass located? It says, it lies within Cumberland Gap National Historical Park on the border of present-day Kentucky and Virginia. That's what I thought. But Angie, chime in. Which, which Cumberland are you yeah. from? Anyway, or this accident happened. So. Right. Okay. Anyway. So. Okay. All right. Let me get my <laughs> sound, effect. <laughs> sound effect. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Yes. That means it's time for silver and gold. Silver and gold is our floss tube shout out section based on the old Girl Scout song. Oh, sorry. Uh, that apparently is still playing. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Make new friends, keep the old. One is silver, one is gold. Yes. Uh, beginning this week with this video, video, uh, this episode, we're going to be featuring our silver and golds that are going to be coming to StitchCon this year. Yes. And uh, if we haven't already shouted them out, sure. then I, yes, I do have a spreadsheet. Obviously. So, um these are folks that uh, we think merit a shout out and that are also coming to StitchCon. And so 
How many do you? How many floss tubers roughly each weekend? Oh, it's going to be something. forty each yeah. weekend. Yeah. So we have quite a pool to draw from. Yeah. Our silver floss. Wow, you really struggle with that word sometimes. It's so funny to me. Hi, Tuba. Hi, Tuba. Anyway, sorry. Hilarious. Our silver floss tuber this week is. Sorry about that. It's okay. It's our friend Bridgen from the Museum Stitcher. Oh, Bridgen. And uh, actually, Bridgen is coming this year. She came last year. Mm -hmm. And um, Bridgen is just adorable. She's, She's very just cute. adorable. She lives in Texas. Yes. She has made 38 videos and she started a couple of years ago in yes. June. Yes. Um, Bridgen is a girl after my own heart. She is, a, she, her BA is in history and her uh, occupation is a uh, museum. I think her master's is in museum studies, something like that. I mean, it's just like. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Are you. Uh, a third, a second daughter of mine. Anyway, uh, Bridget does a great job with her floss tubes uh, and in, is quite involved with um, uh, stitching along with other stitchers a lot of times. Uh, and she is also an accomplished knitter. Yeah. And she's a great reader. So mm -hmm. see what I mean? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you can't not love Bridget. Basically a mini Pam. Yeah, <laughs> sort of, kind of. So go give Bridget a um, some a look. lovings. Go give her some lovings. Go give her a look. Our gold floss tuber this week is Good job, Pam. someone else who we are uh, excited to meet for her first stitch con is Michelle at Made by your first stitch one? I think so. Okay. Made by Michelle McGraw. And many of you do watch her regularly. Mm -hmm. We know she's been doing floss tubes for a minute. For a minute. Like since five years. July 2019. Yeah. And she's made 98 videos. Yep. Uh, Michelle is in North Carolina mm -hmm. and um, has uh, a family that she uh, often stitches for. And she's made lots of imaginative projects and does beautiful finishing yeah, as well. Yeah, I was going to finishing is Finishing so is good. on point. So yes. um, if you don't already watch Made by Michelle McGraw, make go sure you it. go over and give her some love as well. Yes. So that is our silver and gold segment for this week. I love that so much for us. Let's talk about stitching, shall we? We shall. What have you been stitching on this week, Steph? Well, it's not a ton, and I didn't start the rabbit, okay? For those of you that were yeah. waiting with bated breath. Oh, do I really not have it over here? I'm a big dink. Hold, please. Okay, sorry. It was over in my stitchy spot, the cover. Uh, okay, so the I made it to the rabbit of Spring Moon by Plum Street Samplers. And I started up in the top left corner with the moon and I'm working my way down. I am stitching mine with all the called for everything. Called for threads and the called for fabric, which is 36 count baked clay by Fox and Rabbit. And I don't even think you've seen how much I got no. done. No. Yeah, because I stitch on it after Pan goes to bed when I'm done working for the night. Yeah. So that is how much I have done. So what is the blue? Oh, that's a tulip, clearly. Obviously, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there's another green leaf that goes on the other side of that. And then um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's four tulips. Five. Five. Four, five. Yep. Yes. Five. Yep. Nice. So those leaves are giant. So, yeah. um. Well, everything's oversized. Well, I mean, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. But if you see the little indent here, that's where the bunny's foot goes. Okay. So. We've got a place for the rabbit. We have a place for the rabbit. So I'm going to finish, like, do the other leaf on the other side. And then um, I'm going to move the Q-snap over so I can do the rabbit. It'll be time to move the Q-snap. Oh, I'm excited about it. Uh-huh. Looks so, lovely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, I really like it. Spring it's moon. Fun. And 
that timely yeah I thought so so that is what I have been stitching on this week okay what about you Pam what have you been doing with your life oh well, I've done a few things I figured as much so uh last week on Tuesday uh -huh. got together with Tony yeah and we worked on our Anne of Green Gables yeah from the stitching book club and it's going to you can take the paper clip off no i can't it's gonna oh shoot pam no it's gonna look like that uh-huh okay i'm not taking it from you because i'll take the paper clip off yeah and um tony is way ahead of me so I don't know what we're going to do when Tony's is done. <laughs> yeah. But I made it to the uh, opposite side. Oh, boy. You just do a lot of talking, I bet. Yeah, we do a lot of talking. So I'm over to the other side of the design. Mm -hmm. And did you do more blue this week? Is that what you did? Yeah. And I did the other pink uh, oh. chevron or whatever you want to call it. The... Cool. Little shape on the yeah. other side. Cool. Because as I was going along with that blue, I kind of got bored. Oh, did you? So I went down to the LM Montgomery and put in the little pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Cute, cute, cute. cute. Yeah. Cute, cute, cute. Cute, 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 cute. So uh, that it. is fun. Yep. I love that for it's you. It's on mystery fabric. Yeah, that we don't know. It's shoveling though. Yeah. But that's all we've got for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we've got. And my whip go for um, the rest of March, which there's only a week left. Oh boy. Is Blackbird Designs Salute to Abigail. It's going to look like that. Yeah. I have it all kitted up with everything called for. And that chart is now in the uh, Sweet Land of Liberty book. Right. At Blackbird. So I got a little bit more done. It's so pretty. Stephanie got the fabric surged for me because mm -hmm. it was really shreddy. Mm. And so I've got about a quarter of the way done. I won't finish it this month. Oh. Uh, there's more to it than you can imagine. I got the, um, the red bird or the cardinal with the flag in his mouth done. And I got the little uh, flower pot next to it done. And I worked a little bit more on the border. Oh, it's so pretty, Pam. There's only uh, four, four colors. Four colors. Yep. And um, like I said, everything is called for. Gosh, it's gorgeous. The um, fabric is mink from R&R, &R, 36 count, and the silks are from the Thread Gatherer. So, like, so pretty. It's going to be stunning. Oh, I love it so much, one, Pam. One strand of silk over two linen threads. Mm. And it's like, what they say, 35, 36 count? Yeah. Of mink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which sure. is which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, awesome. I'll work on that until <clears throat> the end of the month, a portion of every day. Awesome. And I kind of felt like I wanted to get some beautiful no, I'm looking at this bag thinking how beautiful it is. Um uh, on my sal that I'm hosting for what was my 30th anniversary of my breast cancer diagnosis, which is praiseworthy stitches, simple gifts, yep. courage. Yep. This does not have a deadline on it. The sal does not, but it looks like that. Um, and the reason I want to get it done is because I would like to shoot for it to be at least finished maybe if i'm super lucky <laughs> framed for the brag table at yeah. stitchcon this year That's a lot. it is a lot but i did make a tremendous amount but of progress all you do is stitch so that makes sense <laughs> um so i'm i'm below the word courage wow so that makes me feel good it Look looks at that, like Pam. that. That's incredible, Pam. So I'm thrilled with it. This is Anya Pale, Pale, Pale Pink, uh, even wave from Under the Sea Fabrics, and the two called for 
uh, colors. Mm, and I love it. So I will continue to make this a focus until oh, it's, it's done so for, for Stitch Con. Gosh, it's gorgeous. Um, it's really a fun stitch just to see the completion of different motifs. Oh, sure. And yeah. Do you like and, doing Quakers in general? Yeah. If uh, I feel like your answer is like, yeah, I mean, I like to cross stitch. Yeah, well, that's basically <laughs> what I'm meaning. Um, the, um, the word, the letters go in super quick. Okay. The word went in super quick, and I felt like I was... Um, Cooking with gas. Yeah, covering a lot of space with the word courage, well, yeah. clearly. Yes. Um, and the reason uh, the word beautiful came up is, look at this beautiful bag. That's the back, but look at the front. Mm. From my friend Angie. I just love this bag. <laughs> Give me. Nope. I, I don't want to see the. Want. I want to see the tag at the back of the. Yeah, that's what I needed. Thank you. Oh, tiny house stitcher is Angie. Yeah. Hi, Angie. Um, and, um, cool. Yeah, is she coming to StitchCon? Pam, I don't know. Um, but we'll definitely see her at uh. In the fall. Stitch bus. Uh. Or oh, Shepherd's bus. I think Shepherd's bus. Oh, okay. So, uh, cool. I Love will, that. I will get back to this. Yep. Um, and keep it, keep, keep it, it close as a by, keep it near, keep it as a focus piece. So cute. I know. And then she put, I know the little stitched little pink house fob. Yeah. Freaking cute. That was so a cute. little prairie schooler design. Oh, was it? That's I'm impressive. Mm -hmm. And it's got a little pink ribbon in its mouth. Mm-hmm. That was part of the design. That's cute. Cute, cute, cute. Okay. Yep. And then I had a big finish, you guys. Okay, wait. So that's finishes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So there's a separate segment segment for finishes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so those are our whips of the week. All right. All that for us. Okay. So now is when you do the finishes part. Can you guess what I finished? I can. For the Just love of Pete. Shout it out. Shout it out. For the love Mama of Pete. Boy. For the love of Pete. So first of all. First of all. Second this of all. is one of my biggest whips. So I am really, really excited to be able to have it finished. Yeah, for sure. Um, excuse me. Graceful gray linen, thirty-two count. Yep. Um, wow. The booklet came out in eighty-four. Yep. I believe. Yep. Mine is a bit tattered, as you can tell. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little, a little bit tattered. tattered. It's been handled a little bit. Yep. There's not a lot of, if any, writing no. in it no. at all. If it is, it's pencil. Um, but. Anyway, you can find this on eBay yeah. pretty easily and, and for not a lot of money. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you have been following along, mm. um, I was on the last, the fourth side, mm -hmm. got that far, and you are given, I started to say, because this came out in 80... 485 something like that it was an anniversary of the game okay um and yeah they changed the middle of the playing board the board game in 85 to mark uh an anniversary yeah 50 years cool. 1935 the game came out and awesome. uh this was the original and yep. when they issued the new boards, they went back to the original. However, uh, in... That's what you did, though. Yes. In 1961, mm -hmm. yes, in 1961, which would have been the board I played on since I was born in 1955, mm -hmm. they went a little... 
simplistic mm -hmm. sort of in the style of the day I feel like yeah, yeah. so since this was the board and I asked Stephanie what she thought I should do um, she said it would mean more to you if you did the center that you are familiar with yeah as a kid playing the game for sure so that is what I did yep so um, it does have a little bit of notation underneath the word monopoly that says copyright 1935 comma 1961 Parker Brothers. So that yeah. is why That's um, there was a choice of two different centers yes. and why I went with the one I went with. Right. But it is done and I am thrilled. I'm show them. I am going to show them and it is big. Mm -hmm. uh, so Oh, brother. Um, I don't know how else to show it, uh, but yeah. Stephanie can maybe do a little panorama of it. So by going with that center, it will be hung on the wall and it will have the word Monopoly going right side up, obviously. There you go. So, um, beautiful. Yeah. So, um, congratulations, Pam. I know how much you wanted that done. So we have just as a kind of a side note, we have been watching, Steph and I have been watching a lot of documentaries and dramatic depictions regarding World War Two. World War Two. Started it really at Christmas around right. that time. Right. And um, my friend Tony, the same one that I stitch Anne with, mm -hmm. uh, sent me this very interesting piece of information about Monopoly boards and POW camps mm -hmm. in Germany. Yep. And I thought it was really interesting. Uh, it's not very long, so I'm going to read it if you don't like being read to, you can fast forward five minutes. Okay. Uh, during World War II, the British used Monopoly games to help POWs escape. How do you like this? And if you want, one of the shows we watched was Masters of the Air. Mm -hmm. And it's a very uh, graphic depiction of POW camps in mm -hmm. Germany from the American standpoint, clearly, because it's about the uh, 100th uh, bomb wing. But anyway, this is, this is the little piece. Monopoly has been beloved for generations, but the history of the classic board game isn't all fun and games. During World War II, specially manufactured Monopoly boards were used to help prisoners of war escape from captivity. In 1940, the British government struck a deal with Waddington's, the company that manufactured London-themed editions of Monopoly, in which M-19, a secret department of the War Office, tasked Waddington's with creating a version of Monopoly that contained various tools and information to aid POWs in their potential escape wow. efforts. The sneakily altered Monopoly boards were distributed to Nazi-run POW camps as part of larger aid packages. In addition to the standard thimble and dog game pieces, each board contained metal playing pieces that were actually escape tools, huh. such as a file and magnetic compass. Wow. Each version also contained silk maps provided by the intelligence agency, which could be unfolded discreetly without drawing attention. Oh, yeah, because it would make they noise. were made of silk. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't rattle like all of us we'll talk take about paper maps. Yeah, talk about all of our um, noise that we make on floss tube. What's more, these special editions swapped out fake Monopoly money for real German, Italian, oh, wow. and French currency that could be used to bribe the guards. That's why the British government also contracted game company John Jacks and Son to create chess sets and versions of Snakes and Ladders. If you remember, oh, yeah, I love uh, well, I Snakes and Ladders is the English version of Shoots, Shoots and Ladders, ladders yeah. that I played, my kids played, mm -hmm. and they contained hidden compartments with escape tools as well. I love that. 
That's cool. So isn't that cool? Thanks, Tony, of course. Very cool. And I'm thrilled to have this done. I'm thrilled to know about that history, that mm -hmm. I just slurp that stuff up. Yep. And um, slurpity, slurp, slurp. maybe if I get really lucky, we'll get that framed before stitch gone as well. Well, wouldn't that be nice? So that is my big finish. And awesome. I am thrilled to check that off my list. Yes, ma'am. So. Happy finishes, everyone. I'm trying to keep the glare off my glasses. Good luck with that. But not being too successful. That's all right. All right. Ready? All right. Yes. Promotions. Promotions. Welcome to the Triple P, the promotional portion of the program, people. Um, okay, so starting out our promotions for this week, we have our So Much to Love project bag of the... Mo What's happening? I just wondered if turning out that light... It's not the light. It's, it's the sun from the, sun, the sky. Yes, light. exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Natural light, folks. Uh, so it's the So Much to Love project bag of the month. We got our March bag. And, of course, not only do we get a bag, but we get a bunch of really awesome goodies as well. So everything is on theme and this is fantastic. So we get a lovely note by Karen, who is the owner at So Much Love. So we always get a package of stash tea. This month it is peppermint, bright shiny green. Uh, our little treat this week are Andy's Mints. Yes, I'm going to eat that during the video, so just prepare yourselves. Um, and then uh, we got three beautiful skeins of DMC. Very on theme. Then we got some um, beautiful. Some finish, a little bit of finishing stuff. There's a little, I don't know if you get a little clover charm in there. So, again, on theme. And then every so often we get a exclusive chart by some amazing designer in the industry. And um, that is exclusive to just this club. And that's awesome. And this month it is from Summerhouse Stitchworks. And it is called Floral Sketch Number One. Very pretty. I love it. Mm -hmm. I like the like sort of short stacky pillow. Mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So, um, and it says number one, so I feel like there's going to be more of these, and I'm excited about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, then, do you want to see the bag? I was looking to see where the charm goes. That it, those, That's just stuff to have. Oh, I see. It yeah. doesn't necessarily go with Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, the March project bag of the month from So Much to Love looks like... Oh, I love it. I love it. Gorgeous. I love the green. Yes. I love the lace trim here. I love the sort of wine colored um, hand sewn heart, of course. This is the back. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. And then this is the inside. And uh, Karen wanted me to let everybody know that there are... Um, I think she said three openings Ooh. in the club currently. So, uh, if this whole bundle situation has pushed you over into the, I, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Then now's your chance. There is a link in the description box below to sign up for said club. Yeah. So, um, three spots will go quickly. So Absolutely. make sure you do that. Okay, so, um, can you put that over there? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, and then, uh, of course, we have the Twin Peak Primitives Pattern of the Week. That is where um, there is a Twin Peak Primitives Pattern that between the four of us, we decide what it's going to be. Yep. And then we discount it by 20% for all of you wonderful people mm -hmm. for one week. So, uh, what is this week's Twin Peak Primitives Pattern of the Week called, Pam? It's called you... Um... 
You make you all things, things new. new. Yep. Um, it is an April themed design. It's very lovely. Yes. And um, we're all looking ahead to April at this point with one yes. week left of March and, and spring. With Easter being in, um, you know, at the very, very tail end of March. Yes. Uh, it's just beautiful. We're going to insert a picture of it here. here. Yay. Yep. So, if you love You Make All Things New, mm -hmm. as much as we love You Make All Things New, mm -hmm. and you would like to get your hands on a copy of You Make All Things New, you can do so by going, uh, if you want a PDF version of the chart, <coughs> excuse me, then you can go to the Twin Peak Primitives website or Etsy shop, both of which are linked below. Or if you'd rather have a hard copy of the chart, then you can do so by going only to TPP Limited Editions website or Etsy? Etsy. Etsy. Thank you. Etsy. So all of those things are linked below. So there's no coupon code that you need to do. You just put the item in your cart, check out, and you're good to go. There you go. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. That means it's time for mail call. Okay. Why don't you share your mail call first? Okay. Um, I got a package from uh, a lovely gal named Pat. Hi, and, Pat. Uh, she lives in Florida. And she said that she saw my uh, Instagram post about the Abbey Rose um, chart. Yeah. Merry Christmas pillow. And she said... Now you have one of your own. Of course, I've already stitched this, so this will be put in a future giveaway. Or um, You're not going to keep it for your own collection? I don't think so. Okay, even though it's but out of print. But there's a possibility we'll give it away. So okay. um, um, we'll, we'll just state that. Okay. Um, speaking of Abby Rose, I want to thank everybody who clued us in on um, Abby Rose uh, and the fact that um, Gail is not... Uh, planning to get back into designing. Unfortunately, she has some health issues apparently. And so um, if you have um, any in your stash, just know that that's probably going to be it for Gail. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, thank you, Pat, for sending that our, my way. Mm -hmm. um, I also got a... Do we remember? Where's the... Oops. I also got a package, shoot, I thought there was a card here. I thought there was two. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. okay, Pat, sorry, we were a little bit confused, but we wanted to make sure we also thanked you for some lovely charts that you also sent along with the Abbey Rose. And mm -hmm. uh, let's see. This one goes on that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, these are all more or less uh, Maine or New England uh, themed. Yep. Um, and back in the day, the designers actually took <laughs> photographs and glued them to the front of charts. Believe it or not. And believe it or not, um, the glue is finally given way. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is called Booth Bay Harbor Waterfront. Looks like that. It's just lovely. Mm -hmm. And it was designed by a woman named Wendy Howe, who ran a shop called The Point of It, <laughs> cute, in Booth Bay Harbor. So, mm -hmm. um, there's that one. I love that. Yep. And she sticks this. For Fred, in Love it. that was completed on June thirteenth, nineteen ninety. Wow, I really like the trees on this one. Pretty. Okay, this well, one why here. Why don't I show the picture up close? Okay, this one, same idea, same designer, and this is called Seaport Village. I love it. So that's the photograph of it. Yep. And, and this was uh, done for Fred. 
Uh, Fred got a lot of stitching. Fred got a lot of stitching in June of 91. Yep. This one I don't have a picture of. Oh, shoot. Oh, well. It's Was called... it done for Fred? Did Fred get the picture? <laughs> I don't know. Fred. Uh, uh, oh, this doesn't say that it was done for Fred, no. so Fred didn't get it's, it. Well, there was another one called the Footbridge. Yep. We don't have a picture of right, it. Right, right. Same designer. Yeah. This one was um, designed by Joanne Hanfee in Owl's Head, Maine. And she... Uh, hand... Is Owl's Head down east, too? Uh-huh. And this is a hand-drawn chart uh -huh. of Owl's Head Lighthouse. It's just lovely. Just lovely. Hand-drawn. Um, the year on it is... It's always fun to look. There it is. 1983. Love it. That's a good year. 1983. Yeah, I see. 83. Yep. So, that's lovely. And yep. then this one, I actually have another one by this designer... Designed by Helga, 1988. And, oh, Helga. Oh, Helga. <laughs> and this one's really, really pretty, actually. Um, it's called Willow's End, Booth Bay Harbor, Maine, or Cook's Cove. And isn't that pretty? Isn't that, that is pretty? Full coverage. Full coverage in that oval shape. Isn't that pretty? So, thank you, Pat, for all Can the... Can you imagine stitching that and then putting it in an oval frame? No, I would not. I would do it on blue fabric. Okay, well, that's not what I'm talking about. What are you saying? Putting it in an oval frame. Oh, yeah. I would think an oval frame might be difficult to come across. That's what I'm thinking. I have another one by Designs by Helga that's been in my stash for years. Mm -hmm. And it is the side of a lobster um, men's uh, building. And mm -hmm. all of these buoys, buoys. are all on the Just side. stacked on if top of each other. If you've been down east, you know you've seen those a million sure. times. Yeah. But... Uh, I've never stitched it, but I, I still hang on to it. There you go. So. Um, All right. So that was your mail call. That was my mail call. All right. So. My mail call. Did you save me one? Nope. Eight all three. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, boy. <laughs> I'll buy you a box of Andy's Mints, fam. I hadn't That's had right. Andy's Mints in a minute, so. Yeah. Um, they were very good, Karen. Okay, so this sort of goes into haul, but right, whatever. Okay, so many of you probably have heard of, or at least will, like, maybe you watch her too if you're if you're on the floss tube. But um, Jennifer at the Calculated Stitcher, yes, obsessed with her. Yes. Okay. Yes, we've met her. She's been to StitchCon. Yep. And we uh, had her on Stitch. Uh, Silver and, gold. Silver and gold a couple weeks ago, I think. Yep. And um, she, I follow her on Instagram, and she has an Etsy shop where she is de stashing a lot of things. Yeah. And so um, I obviously had to go take a peek, see? <laughs> Um, you know, just see what Jennifer is up to. And so I picked out a couple things that I will show you in haul. These couple things were half size charts, okay? And when I say half size charts, I mean no bigger than this. Right. Okay? All right. Then this giant box shows up at our house, and I was like, From Jennifer. I'm like, Did I sleep purchase things? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, no, I did not. Uh, she included a number one, an incredibly, incredibly yes. wonderful and very sweet and kind moving note yes so yes. Thank, thank you, you so jennifer. much that for that jennifer meaningful. we loved it we read mm -hmm. it together mm -hmm. and then she sent each of us a gift mm -hmm. and my gift is amazing mm -hmm. i'm wearing it to work tomorrow thank you so much but it says hippo and then there's a picture of a hippo. And then it says, noun, pretty much the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, it's adorable. It is so cute. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. It's so soft. Yes. It's a Gildam t-shirt, which is the number one quality t-shirt in the world. Mm -hmm. And I am obsessed with it. Yeah. I like the material. Just touch my t-shirt. <laughs> So, thank you so much, Jennifer. I love this so much. And not to be outdone. No. 
she sent me a project bag. Oh boy. And it is lovely. Just so lovely. Amazing. Right up my alley, Jennifer. It's so good. Look at this. Just in time for summer and patriotic and summer look stitching. At the, look at it. And look at the back. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, man. Look at Just it. Just beautiful. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Look, Penny, you got your own Patrick bag. I know. I just love it. love it. Thank you, Jennifer, again, for your um, amazing uh, greetings and words yes. in your letter. Yes. And our gifts. Yes. So thank you so, so much. Right. And so I want to see what I bought from Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I got two, uh, she had some Just Nance up for sale. And these are really cute. And I, I look at them and I'm like, I wouldn't, would I actually stitch them? But they are just they're so darn cute. They're just so darn cute. Uh, okay, so the first one is the Gingerbread Angel Mouse. <laughs> just those three words together. Yeah. The little joy thing. Look at the mm -hmm. box he sits on. Mm -hmm. That's quite elaborate. It's so cute, though. And then this one is called, wait for it, Mr. Nutley Owl. <laughs> And he's called Mr. Nutley because he's got an acorn on his head. Look at him with the friggin' acorn. And of course, you get all the embellishments and all the things. And it's, is it just DMC? Because that's what mine is. Yep. And yep. a chronic. Yeah. But, yeah. But, I mean, that's amazing. So, these are the two things I snatched up from Jennifer's. Etsy shop. I will, of course, link her YouTube and her Etsy below. So if you want to go check out what she's got, she has everything from project bags to charts to full kits to wool kits to a whole game of things. Mm -hmm. So, and from the sounds of things on her latest floss tube, it sounded like maybe she'd be adding things as she was like going through her stash. So, yeah, she's kind of re re rethinking some things yeah. that. She knows she won't get to, yeah. and it gives her a little pin money to get the mm -hmm. new stuff. Which just totally makes total sense in my book. Correct. So, um, okay. And then Pam does not have any other haul. No. So, now I'll move to my haul. Um, so, placed an order with Not Forgotten Farm on her um, Etsy, and... Um, okay, so this was one that I'd seen, like, forever ago. I feel like someone brought it to StitchCon or something, and I saw it, and it's been in my wish list for forever. So I just got it. It's called Basket of Cheer. I love it. It's so cute. So she stitched this on a piece of 36-count tea-stained linen that she... She took a piece of Weeks parchment and tea stained it. Hmm. So that's cool. I love that. Uh, and then I've seen this like all over Instagram and stuff. And I was like, whatever, I got to get it. This is called Cinder Klaus or Klaus. He's cute. Yep. I like him in his little pointy stocking. And then uh, this one's on it all over Instagram too. This is called Carrot Top. Yep. Adorbs. Look at his little hips. Hips. <laughs> and then uh, this is Lucky O'Green. Love him. I mean, yeah. adorbs. Yeah. So I picked those up. Then uh, I got a order from uh, Kitten Citra from Teresa Bennett. And... Um, she had a market release and buttons that went with it, and so I just decided it was <coughs> just decided it would be easier to get it from her, um, and then I would be sure to get the buttons <coughs> also. So, um, but of course, <laughs> can't travel alone, you know. So the chart that I originally went in for is called Most Wonderful. And this is what it looks like. 
I love all the little motifs hanging from the bottom. It's so cute. Never seen that before. No? Mm -mm. Well, it's brand new. Oh, that's why. Uh, and then it came, I also bought the four buttons that went with it. So that's awesome. Love this. And then I picked up a few other things. I got some newer releases from With a Needle and Thread. This is called Key to My Heart. This was 100% influenced by Floss Tube. I saw someone working on it and I was like, well, that's beautiful. Thank you. Then these are some of her new spring ones. So this is called Hoppy Easter. I love that. And then Tis Spring. I think that's my favorite. Yeah, I love the flowers. Yep. And the wreath. It's pretty. And then I also picked up a piece of fabric because if you know her fabrics, they are beautiful. And so I like to pick them based on their names. Because that <laughs> makes sense. Um, when I'm just adding to my stash, you know what I mean? So this is 36 count Moby Dick. Love it. So. Love it. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know like what exactly the difference is between... The graham cracker linens and the wabi sabi linens. I don't know. I just know I like them all. Okay. If you know, let us know. Yeah. I don't remember. I think we were told once, but I don't know. I'm remember. sure she explained it somewhere. In the oh, just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Pam and I are in the are in the Endangered Species Club. Definitely. From uh, Lindy Stitches. Mm -hmm. And the second installment of that came out and we are in like there's different not like levels but I guess options uh, when it comes to the club and so you can get just the chart um, you can get just the chart PDF or hard copy and or you can get the chart with the threads and so we get the hard copy of the chart with the threads so the second animal in the endangered species club by Lindy Stitches is the African Savannah Elephant. Look at him, man. Isn't that awesome? Uh -huh. I think it's so, so cool. Yeah. So, um, a little bit of information about this beautiful, beautiful creature. Um, he's the heaviest species of elephant and is the largest terrestrial creature on Earth, weighing 4.7 tons. Yeah. Um, Have a cookie. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not upset about eating the three Andy Swins now. Thank you so Seriously. much. Um, so they are easily distinguished by their noticeably large ears, which allow them to radiate excess heat and front legs that are noticeably longer than hind legs. Isn't so that that's interesting. interesting? I didn't know that. Yep. Um, okay. Wait for this little factoid. Okay. These elephants eat mostly grass, but have fruit and other plants when they are in season. Their daily intake <laughs> is around... 600 pounds. Well, sure. I mean, that's a lot of elephants you gotta feed. You know all what I'm saying? All that's gotta go in all of that yep. huge... Yep. Body. Body. That huge elephant. All right. Um, and then, of course, we got... Uh, so, when I say threads, she just sends the hand-eyed threads. She doesn't send the DMC. Um, and so, there's some grays. And then, this beautiful week's color is called Cape Cod. And this is used over here in the straight stitches, which is super cool. Yeah. And then uh, she also sends, of course, a sticker mm -hmm. with the animal. Yep. So that's awesome. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. All right. And then um, this was ordered at market from Shepherd's Bush. It came in and one of them was for me, and this is brand new from Shepherd's Bush, called All Manner of Thing. Yep. And it is the full kit. Someone I was watching on Floss Tube, I can't remember now, also showed this. I mean, look at those houses, though. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh, I love it. And you got everything. Yep. All the things. Yep. So this might be my Shepherd's Bush retreat start. That makes Perfect sense until you see what we get. I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's a very good point. Val. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and then we also got our spring issue of the Punching on Premium Stitcher magazine. Mm -hmm. um, another beautiful 
beautiful issue, of course. I think this is my favorite out of here. Which one? Crochetta Go Go's. Oh, yeah. To morning doves or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's a fantastic issue. Yeah. Um, oh, and then this one, again. From Teresa. From Teresa, yeah. Oh, sure. There it is. It's called Flowers That Bloom, and it says, The flowers that bloom in the spring breathe, a, breathe promise of merry sunshine. Very nice. I love it. Mm -hmm. So much. Her font is great. Mm -hmm. So, um, nice. Yay for that. Yeah. And then the uh, last thing that I got was from a stash unload site on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, someone was de-stashing a bunch of kits. Mm -hmm. And I have the chart for this already, but the price and what you got for that price, right? I can either resell or give away the paper chart I already have. So this is from With a Needle and Thread and this was originally a 2022 Dying to Stitch Retreat exclusive, mm -hmm. um, and someone was selling the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, for... and they were even kind enough to send it in the box. I know, right? That the retreat attendee got it. Yes, as got, they it. got it. Yep. And I believe this is called The Color of Winter. Yep. Um, so you get the little tag for the back of your piece when it's done. Mm -hmm. Obviously... The chart, the color of winter, and then um, I think these are floss straps. See, there's like this little hole up at the top. Mm. But I like, do you make your own holes? Like, yeah, is that what you do with this? I'm not sure. So, and then of course, the 36 count winter brew and all of the threads. Yep. So, love it. I just mm -hmm. love a kitted up situation, and now it's in a box, and I'm good to go. So lovely, it's yes. A good catch on stash on. It was yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. and very good shipping. Love that, love that, love that. So, absolutely, yay for that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that I believe is all mm -hmm. of the haul. Yep. And Add to cart. cart. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, Got some people to thank. Do we, we do have some people to thank. We're going to remember this week. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank um, our lovely friends at PNB Creations. What is Pam this and for? Bob. What is this for? You didn't even explain. I'm me. going to if you let me finish the okay. sentence. Okay. Um, we want to thank all the folks who took advantage of the uh, links in the description box for Buy Me a Coffee and Kofi. And uh, we sincerely appreciate um, these donations. They go towards framing, finishing, and postage expenses. Yes. So again, Pam and Bob, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Hope you guys are doing well. Jana, thank you very much. Lucinda, thank you so much, Lucinda. I like that name. Yeah. And Carol, thank you so much, Carol. Yes. Actually, Lucinda is the gal in Australia. Oh, they got her, got the one the giveaway. Yes, she won a giveaway. We, we mailed it to her. She got it, and she gave us a little, I love that. a little thank you gift. So that was lovely. Very sweet. Uh, so um, that brings us to plans. Yes, and we have um, a StitchCon meeting tomorrow. We have a StitchCon meeting, and I'm getting together with Tony this week to I work more on Anne. Yep, and. Uh, I don't know what else is going on necessarily this coming week. Uh, I'm going to continue to work on my Courage Sal or Pam Survival Sal, however you want to put it. Um, I have a monthly marker stitch that I'm working on mm -hmm. it's so before cute. the beginning of April. Yep. And uh, what's today? What's the date today? 24? So I do believe so, yeah, the 24th. So yes, tomorrow the numbers for WIPCO get called. Oh, boy. And that's always exciting. So, I love that. Um, yeah. I really um, don't want to put spring moon away, though. Well, you don't have to do anything. There's no cross-stitch police. Okay. So you can work on whatever you want to work on in the limited it's, time you have to stitch. It's funny because for WIPCO, I don't know if I would have naturally pulled out spring moon, but I like 
having the numbers called and then we look at these two pieces and go, oh, I haven't thought about that piece in a while. I'll pull that out, which is exactly what happened. Which with is what happened. Yeah. Um, the cats are doing great. Yes. Um, Mac is over there on the back of the sofa. Asleep on sound couch. asleep. He's had quite an adventurous day. He yes. Did, he has, for your information... He has officially gotten to the top of the entertainment center. Yes. And we had a ball watching him from the very tippy top uh -huh. reach down and try to get some of the scissor fobs and so forth. And accoutrements. And accoutrements and little smalls that we have it's on those so shelves. Funny. Because it's... It's I mean, acrobatic. It's actually... It's very acrobatic. And his it's impressive. center of gravity is clearly on his back Push legs it. and his rear end. Yep. And he was able to keep the back part of his body on the top, yep. but both paws were reaching below him. It was wild. And it was fun, fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. So we um, we are continuing to love him and enjoy him, but yes. we are not going to wake him up for you. No, we're Sorry. not. Sorry. <laughs> nope. Millie seems to have uh, a Season little bit of... Um, Respiratory, maybe some seasonal allergies. I think it's seasonal I, allergies. Uh, so she's, she happens, she's, this happens every year. Yeah, she just kind of gets a little congested, does a lot of and sneezing. Yes. But um, they're getting along great, yeah. and, um, you know, they just lighten our life. So Yes. That's about it. Yep. Um, we are enjoying the sunshine, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll take it, right? Because yes. Because some folks uh, aren't aren't having a very springy time. No, ma'am. And you know who you are. Yep. So um, we hope that you uh, enjoyed what we had for you this week. Mm -hmm. We hope you come back. We hope you subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things. Yes. And um, we'll be back next week. Yeah. Um, again, Elaine, who did we want to make Eileen sure? Eileen Robinson. Oh, Eileen Robinson. Give us a holler. Send me an email. Yes. Um, we have that chart to send to you, yes. and we would love to do that. Yes, we would. And that's pretty much going to do it, right? That is going to do it. Yes, ma'am. All right. So it. we will see you in a week. Yep. In the meantime, I'm Pam. And I'm Stephanie. And this is Just, Just Keep, Keep Stitching. Bye. Bye.